Hello everyone, this is Alex and welcome to Terranion FPGA Direct. Back in October 2016, we founded Terranion SL, an engineering company focused on retro gaming, founded by retro gaming fans to deliver innovative retro gaming products. To achieve this, we have a Skylet team composed of hardware and software engineers, experts in classic systems, emulation and embedded systems. We develop all of the different parts of our products and our skill set is composed of schematics design, PCB layout design, FPGA coding in VHDL and Verilog, MCU coding in C, desktop application coding in C Sharp, cells design, injection mold design, package design, integral production management and sourcing of the different parts. Our first project was NeoSD. NeoSD is an FPGA cartridge emulator for the Neo Geo and was released in two different forms, NeoSD AS for the home console and NeoSD MVS for the arcade boards. Our goal with this project was to deliver a cartridge emulator that would emulate all the different types of custom chips present on the Neo Geo game cartridge using FPGAs. It will transfer the ROM data from the microSD card to the internal cartridge memory table memory, so collectors could keep playing their games while they preserve the original media in the best possible condition. The main object of the project was accuracy and bringing players the same experience they have with the original cartridge. To achieve this, we decided to use flash memory instead of RAM memory. The largest Neo Geo game is 96 MB, compared with the biggest Mega Drive game that is just 8 MB. So, achieving an instant loading method using RAM is not possible at all, to, to the large amount of data that has to be transferred from the microSD card to the cartridge's internal memory. That's why we decided that flash memory was the better choice, because one is great and the cartridge can be powered and game persists in flash memory. This gives players the same plug-and-play experience as the original cartridge offers, where you just turn on your Neo Geo and the game instantly boots. In the months following the new SD release, some users expressed their interest in a new SD like cartridge that will use RAM instead of flash, therefore allowing them fast switching among games, even the sum of multiples RAM writing times will be bigger than on flash. In the summer of 2017, we started to develop a flash and RAM cartridge, one that will allow to store four times the biggest Neo Geo game on flash and one time on RAM. That will sum a total of five slots of 96 megabytes each, one independent RAM store for fast switching games and four independent flash slots for persistent instant on games storage. We call it this product Neo SD Pro and it will contain a total of four 180 megabytes of memory, which is five times the memory amount of the biggest Neo Geo game. The hardware design was so deep that it required a six layers circuit board with matched signals layout. In March 2018, the product was ready to market, and after we announced it, we had planned a three months window for factory production, opening sales, and start shipping the first units to customers about June 2018. What happened from March 2018 to January 2019 when we finally opened it, new SD Pro sales was something great and forced us to delay new SD Pro market release. Just after new SD Pro reveal, Rasola, the creator of custom Neo Geo BIOS Univius, contacted us with an idea. 
Now that you guys have a Neo Geo RAM card, why not make the Neo Geo CD games running on Ace of MBS? We instead loved the idea of playing Samurai Shadow RGP on Ace, and this was something we really wanted. But there was an issue. The new SD Pro hardware, as it was designed to work as a regular card, didn't allow that, mainly because of the CDDA audio output and the writing of data to the full Neo Geo CD-RAM area. So the hardware and the software design had to be changed, and the whole Neo SD Pro launch would be delayed, but without it was worried. So we decided to update Neo SD Pro hardware and software design to include all the necessary changes to run Neo Geo CD games. Even with the updated hardware, there were still a few challenges. First, there is no access to any uncompressed or analog audio output from the cartridge. So, in order to play CDDA, we used the ID PCM B channel that Neo Geo CD games don't use and made the FPGA and MCU to trick the Yamaha audio chip into thinking it's playing a long sample from ROM. But actually, streaming the CDDA music while compressing it to the AD PCM in real time. Of course, this creates some limitations, as you aren't playing full quality CDDA audio anymore, and because of the AD PCM recompression, as there is only one channel, the audio is missed to mono, but it's still 45 kHz, so it sounds great. Another problem was the Neo Geo CD BIOS. A replacement BIOS had to be coded from scratch, so the games call it to thinking they are calling the original CD BIOS row times and redirecting the games to call those row times instead. That includes CD file reading, CDDA commands processing, data upload from main RAM to any of the Neo Geo CD RAM areas, memory card access simulation if users don't have an actual memory card plugged onto ACE or MBS and some other things. We also wanted to support the original loading screens each Neo Geo CD game contained, so there was a lot of work to do, and here is where we could count on Rasola to use his knowledge of Neo Geo BIOS and Motorola 68K coding to help us with the creating an accurate replacement of the Neo Geo CD BIOS routines to use with Neo SD Pro. All those chains were generic, that would make many games work, but then there was another issue. Neo Geo CD memory map is slightly different than the MBS and ACE memory map. Neo Geo CD has a continuous 1 MB area for RAM, mapped at 100,000H, while on MBS ACE there is only 64K there, and the banks area that we can read and write with the new hardware added to the new SD Pro is not located at the same address, is located as at 200,000H instead of 100,000H. So for many games this needs to be remapped while loading from CD when the game uses that data. This forces us to create a special Neo file for each game that contains the remapping of the addresses specific for each game, and this was a big task that required a huge amount of time. Also, the addresses in the Neo Geo CD that correspond to the ROM addresses in MVA's ACE are run and thus gritable on Neo Geo CD, but there are no signals in MVS ACE cartridge connector to allow writing there, so the games that are writing there usually to build the CD file loading list needed that block remaped to RAM, where it can be read and writing. All of this work ended up causing a 7 month delay of the new SD Pro launch. Great news is that from today there is a new firmware update available for free to all new SD Pro users that enables playing Neo Geo CD games on Neo Geo AES and MBS. On top of this, we have also added all possible with new SD hardware, new software functions Neo CD Pro has into regular Neo SD such as cheats and in-game menu, because our goal is always to deliver as much as possible 
to all of products. In addition to the Neo Geo CD firmware, the first set of custom Neo Geo CD Neo files are also available at our dollars section. Those Neo files don't contain any copyrighted material and will require a Bing QA image of the original Neo Geo CD game to be placed on the root of the microSD card that NeoSD Plus users can create from their original Neo Geo CD discs. This first set of Neo files contain the most challenging to adapt games such as Samurai Shodown RPG, Neo Trove Masters, Thin Trick, Iron Clan, and much more. I hope you guys enjoy this awesome milestone. Playing Neo Geo CD games on Ace and NDS with loading time reduced to just a few seconds. It's an amazing user experience. Lastly, we would like to thank Rasula for all the amazing work and feedback he has provided us, as most of the work on Neo Geo CD games Neo Files has been done by him. And to recommend everyone owing a Neo Geo AS or MBS to install an Unibios chip. If you still don't have it, it's an awesome addition to your Neo Geo. Both regular Neo SD and Neo SD Pro in the two different variants, AS for the home console and MBS for the arcade boards, are available at our shop on the link below. Unibios, Neo Geo Custom BIOS, can be guided on the link below. I would also like to remind everyone that all of our different NeoSD and NeoSD Pro version are fully compatible with the grid Univios. Ok, so after all the Neo Geo CD excitement, it's time to talk about our second project, Super SD System 3, the PC Engine All-in-One Optical Disc Emulator. But first, let's have a recap about what the PC Engine is. PC Engine is a console related to the Japanese market in 1987. There was an overseas release in USA and Europe two years after under the name of TurboGrafx-16, with a much more reduced catalogue. So let's focus on the original and more extensive Japanese catalogue. The PC Engine catalogue is composed of five different media types, each requiring different hardware or add-ons. Those are Who cared? The regular cartridge games in a card format those can be played on any of the different PC Engine's based consoles. CD-ROM 2. Those games were released on CD format and required one of the different CD drive add-ons with at least 64K of RAM memory among a system card in Hue card format containing the required BIOS to be run. Super CD-ROM 2. Same CD format at CD-ROM 2 games but requiring 192K of RAM memory instead of the base 64K. This additional RAM can be added by using a system card or contain it on the later CD-ROM drive models. Arcade CD-ROM 2. Like the two previous CD formats, the required RAM memory has been raised to 2 MB and the only way to play those games is by adquiring the expensive arcade card. Supergrax Hue Card. Same format as regular Hue Cards, but requires an upgraded console model called Supergrax. In addition, the PC Engine lacks RGB output, so we decided to build a device that will support all those different game formats and also contain a built-in RGB output. Super SD System 3 plugs into the expansion port of the PC Engine and the rest of the different models that have an expansion port 
allowing to play those PC Engine media formats from the internal SD card port while having a built-in RGB output and without requiring any additional hardware such as the different CD-ROM drives or system cards. Only the seven related SuperGraphs Hue card games require an actual SuperGraphs console in order to be played. Super SD System 3 emulates all the hardware inside next CD-ROM drive add-ons using a mix of FPGA and MCU code. The FPGA does the interface to the extra RAM inside the CD-ROM drive and also for the RAM that is present in the system card and the arcade card. At the same time, it implements the SCSI interface of the original CD controller and requests the MCU to read and set back sector data while it buffers it so the PC Engine can read it. The FPGA also forwards the ADPCM reads and writes those to the MCU. The MCU handles the sector request, reading the data from a BIN or ISO CDA image file and send it back. At the same time, it also performs ADPCM audio decoding and mixes it with the CDDA audio from the CD image file that is buffered inside the FPGA and sent it to the DAC for mixing the PC Engine audio. As a nice addition, Super SD System 3 allows for independent backup RAM saving into the SD card, allowing infinite save slots, and the ability to backup your original Hue card and SuperGraph Hue card games to the micro SD card. Over the last several months, we have been working to improve the quality of the audio and RGB video output signals with the help of some skilled technicians. We would like to say thanks to Voltar for sharing with us his RGB output design Firebrand X, for sharing with us his audio bypass design and Mobius strip tech for validating our new BOA revision. Thanks, guys. Your know-how have made Super SD System 3 video and audio output better. Ok, after all those wonderful products, most of you were wondering what's next. And what's next is the hardest project we have ever worked on. Just after Super SD System 3 market release, people started asking us to develop a similar product for Mega CD. The main issue with Sega CD is that it's more a console itself rather than a CD-ROM drive add-on like the PC Engine CD-ROM drives are. Mega CD motherboard contains a Motorola 68K processor, a custom VDP graphics processor that most Mega CD games use for 3D likes rotations, among with audio hardware and CD-ROM drive controller chips. So even if it's a CD add-on, it's more like a separated console because it has its own processor, graphics processor and CD-ROM drive controller. Everything is integrated on a single printed circuit board, so the only way to make a similar solders plug and play solution like the Super SD System 3 was to make a complete FPGA Mega CD console, one that all contains all the original Mega CD hardware replicated into a FPGA and works with all the existing Mega Drive and Genesis consoles. So we did. I am happy to introduce you Mega SD, a FPGA Mega CD in a Mega Drive cartridge form.
the Mega SD project started back in October 2016, just after NeoSD was introduced to the market, and it took two and a half years to be completed. Mega SD was our hardest project to develop because it's not just an optical disc emulator as some people might think. The Sega CD is almost a complete console, with its own CPU faster than the Mega Drive 1, a own chip and a GPU capable of drawing scaled and rotated graphics, so it required a lot of effort to accurately simulate all that hardware into a single cartridge. It also contains a lot of RAM in multiple buses that can be accessed simultaneously. That's why you will not tie several RAM chips in the cartridge, instead of using a large one. Megasd's FPGA contains a Motorola 68K software core running at 12.5 MHz. This core is accurate and able to run all games as a real 68K. It supports all features needed by the Sega CD, like auto vectored interrupt, interrupt ACK cycles, two wire bus arbitration, and others. It's connected to eight megabyte of SRAM with only 512 kilobytes being used for Sega CD program RAM and 256 kilobytes of fast RAM used as war RAM. Unlike the Sega CD, there is only a RAM chip used for war RAM, so when the main 68K that is present on the Mega Drive and the sub 68K that is present on the Mega CD both access it, it's multiplexed but as this RAM is 10 times faster than the real Sega CD CD RAM, there are no extra weight states required. Furthermore, accesses had to be slowed down to simulate the long access time in the Sega CD that causes Mega CD processor VDP to lag by one war when doing DMA transfers from War RAM. The War RAM bank switching is also implemented on the FPGA, with at least knowing quirks and verified to behave the same than the real hardware. Then we have the GPU. It's capable of rendering rotated and scaled telemaps to the war RAM in a format compatible with Mega Drive's VDP. So the main 68K processor just needs to transfer them to the Mega CD VDP assist to display. The most complex part of the GPU is the access arbitration because it's possible to have the sub 68K DMA and GPU all accessing the same RAM at the same time. Also, the GPU can do read, modify, write accesses to the world RAM in order to skip drawing on already drawn pixels. This all creates a complex system of priority arbitration that must be properly handled. On the song side, the audio chip is not too difficult to simulate. It's an 8-channel, 8-bit signed sampler player that plays the audio from its own dedicated RAM. It has the added difficulty that the CSTAK can write and DMA data while it's playing, so it's necessary to multiplex the accesses to the RAM. And then, of course, there is the CD-ROM interface. It can be divided in two parts. The CD controller, CDC and the CD drive CDD. The CDC is a standard CD controller from Sanyo that receives the raw CD sector data and performs the coding and error correction. It contains 16 kilobytes of RAM, where it can store up to six raw sectors, so it's able to receive more sectors while the sub 68K is reading the previously received ones. The tricky part on the CD-ROM is having data being sent at the proper speed, as some games are designed to keep the CD-ROM streaming data continuously and sending data too fast will cause the sector buffer to warp around before the 68K has read the data. That's also why an accurated 68K is needed, so they properly sync with the real speed. All the previously parts are implemented inside the FPGA, 
in synthesized hardware, so everything runs in parallel like in the real Sega CD, no software emulation. And finally, the CDD is the server drive controller and is implemented on the Mega SD's MCU element. The FPGA paces the CDD command as is, as in the real Sega CD, where they are handled by a separated 4 bit MCU to the CDD that processes them and sends the status back. Commands include talk, decoding, and retrieving start playing at a given sector. Pause, playing, seek. These commands are handled by a state machine in the MCU. When a play command is requested, the MCU will start sending sector data at the proper speed to the FPGA to be stored in the CDC sector buffer. Having everything run in sync was a very hard task. The day that Sonic CD voted in the intro screen, it was an amazing day. Once we had the first prototypes running, we had to choose to make a device that would plug into Mega Drive's expansion port like the original Mega CD DOS or to pack it into a cartridge form. Both solutions have pros and cons. The pros about the cartridge port are that regular Master System and Mega Drive games can be loaded and played. Master System games can be played from it, while it's not possible from the expansion port. Also, there is a ROM size limit on the expansion port that won't allow ROMs bigger than 256 kilobytes to be launched from it. This applies to both 32X and Mega Drive game ROMs. Also, as the cartridge connector has two pins to input the stereo and allow audio to the Mega Drive mixing circuit, we can use them for the sound chip and CDDA audio. This audio is output at CD quality, 44 kHz stereo, 16 byte, using a high quality audio amp circuit designed by Firebrand X who also helped us to improve the Super SD System 3 audio output. If you still don't know about Firebrand X, have a look at his Twitter. He has done amazing work to improve Mega Drive audio with his own crystal clear audio modification board. The cons of the cartridge port are that the only six Sega CD32X games can be run from it, because when the cartridge is plugged, through the 32X accesses to the Mega Drive memory addresses where the Sega CD registers are stored is blocked by the 32X circuitry, and so it's not possible to communicate with the Sega CD through the 32X. Good news is that we designed Mega CD to be able to be plugged into the expansion port as well. This will just require a passive adapter that we are considering to produce in the near future if there, are, if there is a no interest in those six Sega CD 32X games. I would also like to mention that Mega CD is compatible with standard no CD 32X games if the user has the 32X hardware plugged into the Mega Drive. CD games needed to be removed to be played because of the previously mentioned issues. Mega SD has been tested on different official Mega Drive models and as part of its design, it requires the audio input signals to be present in the cartridge port, just like the original Mega Drive and Mega Drive DOS designs have. On the Sega Nomad, Sega decided to not route those two pins from the cartridge to the audio missing circuit, so in order to get CD audio sound on Sega Nomad, the same mod that is required to get Master System FM sound on the Nomad has to be performed. It just constrains to wiring two pins with two wires. In addition to Mega SD, being able to play Master System, Mega Drive, Mega CD and 32 x games, we have introduced a five type of game. We call this Mega Drive Plus games. This is similar to NSU1 games on the SNES. Those are Mega Drive games modified to use Mega SD's CD audio hardware. Here is an example All Room Mega Drive modified to play On Room 2 arcade audio tracks.
Get ready. Mega SD production has already started and it will be shipped with a black transparent smoke cell with the same design as this prototype cell and with the same look and quality as the new SD Pro cells. It will be packaged into a premium box package similar to the Super SD System 3 box and it will come with a manual and sticker applet. Finally, I would like to say thanks to Alien PDX for designing the pixel art on our products, user interface and to all our customers and partners that have made all these amazing products possible. Neo SD, Super SD System 3, Neo SD Pro and Mega SD. Amazing times for retro gaming and remember that the best is still coming. See you all in the next Terranium FPGA Direct video. Enjoy life and enjoy retro gaming.